we're comparing EI transformers with toroidal transformers. This is a 300 watt output transformer. This is supposedly a 200 watt output transformer. The input is 240 volts coming from a, an approved 3 pin flex and plug approved for the Australian standard. This one over here doesn't carry any approval. This this cord here is fully secured, you can't pull it out. This one here, you can pull the lead straight through out. It's not, it's not compliant. Here you have a fuse holder, which is not safety. I can put my finger in there. This one is an approved type. It's a safety type fuse. It'll, it'll, it'll come straight out. Can't put, it's insulated. I can't get a shock in there by putting my finger in. Um, the other thing you might want to see is that there is no way that this transformer is capable of doing 200 watts. That's only a 100 watt, 100 watt transformer. It hasn't got a continuous rating. This transformer is continuously rated 24/7 and will meet the requirements. As you can see in in um, in this transformer, it's been opened. There's no thermal cutout in there, which is in addition to the fuse to cause protection. This, this transformer in here has the thermal cutout which is inside the winding in there. So you've got two modes of protection here, fuse and, well three modes, switch, fuse and thermal cutout. Here you've got switch and fuse, but the fuse is not a safety fuse. Here you've also got a thermal cutout protection. This is genuine 24-7. This will do 300 watts. This will only do 100 watts. There's no way this is capable of 24, um, of running at 24/7. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 200 watts. Um, this also is a is a um, here is just a universal adapter. This is a genuine UL approved um, American socket. The other thing I want to point out on the EI transformer is that the primary and the secondary in here are not divided. It's not on a divided bobbin, it's on a concentric bobbin. So that isn't isn't as safe as on a divided bobbin. Here, divided bobbin. The uh, in inside the toroidal transformer it's all soldered. Inside the EI transformer they use uh, crimp connections because it's faster and easier. This is better, this is better for longevity. The, uh, so generally speaking, the, also the idle current on the toroidal transformer is much lower. That is, when you just turn the transformer on but it's not pulling load, the current here would probably be about a, at least a fifth of the current of the EI transformer. That means actually that you're using less power and you're wasting less power from your house. I'm going to discuss now the ability of these transformers to deliver power to your device. If you have a device connected to these transformers and you want to run that device all the time, this transformer has the ability to give its full power 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This transformer is undersized. It will not be able to deliver the full power to your device. In other words, make your device run 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It's incapable. It is basically undersized. This is an undersized transformer. Some of the features of the toroidal transformer compared to the EI transformer is that the toroidal transformer uses enamel wire which is a 180 degree insulation class. In other words, it can run at 180 degrees. It's also double coat. It's got a double layer of enamel. In the EI transformer, it only uses 105 degree insulation class or 130 degree insulation class wire, and it's not as um, thermally capable as the toroidal transformer. The toroidal transformer has a very low magnetic field surrounding it so that it won't interfere with surrounding equipment. In other words, if you've got a piece of radio equipment here, and the toroidal transformer is here, it won't cause interference. This 
transformer has a feel which is eight times as big as the toroidal transformer so it is very sensitive to having any electromagnetic or electrical equipment near this transformer. As you can see on uh, in terms of safety the toroidal transformer has a fully insulated uh, housing for the fuse. So in other words if I put my finger in there I can't get electric shock. In here you can see that I can touch the metal of the fuse. So this is a safety fuse construction. This is non-safety fuse construction. Can you see the metal there? So that's dangerous. That's not dangerous. Show you the the wiring in here is very poor. It's got pieces of PVC wrapped around it. It's not really really adequate. The uh, the leads are live here. If you look in here on the toroidal transformer, the leads are fully insulated with uh, insulated quick connects all over it. Um, very solid earth to the ground and very clean wiring. The neatness of the wiring of the toroidal transformer, the way the insulated quick connects are used, so that I can't touch any of the any of the um, connections here. Here, in here, the 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 wiring's just got a little piece of a little piece of wrapped wrapped uh, PVC around it so it's not safe. The wiring is very poor very poor and haphazard. It's very poor quality. Here this is organized. The other thing that I want to point out is that the this these leads will pull right out. Look, they're not cable they're not restrained. Here the cables are restrained. They won't pull out. This is attention to detail and what we call the Tortec quality. The main thing that the toroidal transformer has is the thermal cutout. So if you have uh, a, not a short circuit but just a overload condition, the fuse will not react sometimes to the overload, um, but the thermal cutout will react to the overload. And that means that it will monitor the temperature inside the transformer. If the temperature inside the transformer goes too, too hot, it will automatically turn off. This transformer hasn't got it. Transformer is supposed to be 200 watts. We've just tested it at 200 watts output, and the output winding has a temperature rise of 131 degrees C above ambient, which is extremely hot. The uh, varnish all melted, and the insulation around the output terminal started to melt, and the core, which is the steel part of the transformer, was basically untouchable. It was just too hot. The transformer doesn't have any thermal overload in it so it has no thermal cutout in case the fuse doesn't work but the fuse won't won't sense the temperature inside of the transformer you need a thermal cutout inside it we've just completed the temperaturized testing of this transformer it's supposedly a 200 watt output transformer 240 volts in 110 volts out here and this transformer got extremely hot the varnish all melted and the insulation around the terminal blocks in here got very hot and melted. The transformer was that hot that you couldn't touch it. It was like 150 degrees which is potentially very dangerous. This transformer being so hot has unfortunately has no thermal overload protection. In other words you can't sense, it has no sense to be able to find that the temperature is too high inside the windings and that causes a potential very very uh, dangerous situation it, and that's why the transformer was allowed to get so hot because it had no thermal sensing inside the transformer. You, you must have a thermal overload inside the transformer.